Hey everybody, welcome back to another Creator tutorial. Today we're going to go over three layer styles which are pretty similar in their overlay types. So I'm going to be using this artwork to kind of change it up a little bit to show you what we are going to be doing. So if we go to right click on it and go to the layer styles, we have three overlay options, color, gradient, and pattern. We have a layer option, a blend mode over here that we can do an overlay with. So if instead of a multiply, I can do an overlay and it kind of just overlays the color. Put that back to multiply, which is also non-destructive. But if you just want to do an overlay that covers the whole layer without making a new layer, you can just do it with the layer styles. And that allows you to easily turn it on and off without adding extra layers for you to sift through if you already have a ton. So we're going to start with the color overlay. I'm going to turn that on. It is pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to overlay that color with the blend mode that you so choose. So I'm choosing a blue, so it's going to give it a nice blue overlay. So it's very light, not super dark. If we push the opacity up to 100%, it's going to multiply that and change the overall look. If you want just a subtle overlay, you can change the opacity to something more transparent. It just has a bluish hue now. You can also change the blend mode like everything else. If you want to do a dissolve and do a weird pixely look to it, we can do that. Maybe you want a grainy look to your artwork, like a VHS tape or something. Hint, hint. Things like that. We can do a gradient overlay. I'm going to uncheck the color overlay so we can see everything individually without messing anything up. So again, change the blend mode. You can change the opacity. This is where the gradient is. You can change the style of the gradient. You can line it with the layer if we'd like. Change the angle, the scale, and the dither. And that dither is basically just going to make it a little bit smoother. So we're going to use a psychedelic gradient so we can see the results. As you can see, it doesn't show up too much with the colors down here because the greenish color and the yellow and everything is far up on top. It's actually over starting here it looks like. Oh no, it's going from top to down. Linear, sorry. And the purplish and reds are down here, which makes sense why there's not too much of a difference on the heart. <laughs> so if we change it to radial, you can see it starts in the middle here. So that looks like the purple is going to be in the middle. It's going to branch out into a radial direction. You can do an angle. So it's just going to be an angle. You can do reflected. So that's pretty cool. I actually like that a little better. It's got like a holographic look to it almost. So if you're doing, maybe a lot of artists tend to do an artificial holographic look for stickers and other items like that for Kickstarters and um, just dis quick displays for any special campaigns, you could do something like that. And then we have diamond. It's kind of similar to linear. We change the opacity, we can do a full on uh, multiply on that, we can do a slight subtle look. We can change the direction. Actually, let me bring that up a little bit more. We'll do linear so we can see that. There we go. You can see how it's changing it. We can change the angle manually by clicking and rotating this and we can change the scale. So if you want it to be smaller, you make it smaller. If you want it to be larger, we can make it larger. So let's say we want it to be very small and make the radial. You can see the radial really nicely over here as it spreads out. And we can reverse the gradient. So if you want the purple to be on the outside and the green to be like the origin point, you can do that too. And again, if you want to have a smoother gradient, you can add the dither on there. And that's pretty much it for the gradient overlay. So now we're going to move on to the pattern. We're going to turn that off so we can see the pattern specifically. Check that on. So this is a really good use if you have um, maybe a separate layer for clothing or um, let's say you're doing a textured poster or something and you want a really cool edgy look. <laughs> we can add a texture to this. So let's say we want this weird pattern. We can change the scale, make it smaller if we want. We can put that back up to 100%. 
You can see the pattern really clearly. It looks really cool in the skull and the heart, by the way. I like this look. But making it smaller gives it a really interesting look as well. Now, obviously, if you go too small, you can actually see the pattern patterning. Is that how you say it? The pattern? It starts looking um, kind of boxy, which is normal for patterns. It's very... It's not hard, but not exactly easy to avoid that when you're making a new pattern, so it's something to keep in mind. But 20% around here has a really nice textured look without it giving that constant um, repeat boxy look. You can change it to change it to dots. Maybe you want like a 70s retro look to it. Make those bigger. Make them a little bigger. Come on, you can do it. These are pretty small to begin with, so there we go. That's pretty interesting. Do a blurred one. Stars. All sorts of things you can do with a pattern. And you can change the opacity in the blend mode as always. So if you want to maybe have this affected by the color, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, by doing an overlay, we can kind of see it's affecting the color more with the pattern. So in the brain, it looks more pink. In the red, it's going to be a darker red. In the skull, it looks more like a off-white type color. And obviously, this is gray, so it's going to look gray. <laughs> so if you want to change how it affects the color, or if you want the pattern to be affected by the color, you can do that. So yeah, there's a lot of patterns to choose from. You can always create your own and add them here as well. So now we can actually combine all these together if we really wanted to. So this has got some crazy looks to it. So the last gradient we settings we used and the last color overlay settings we used, this is what it would look like with all of it on together. Very interesting. I really like how that brain is looking with this. Not so much anything else, but the brain seems to really enjoy these overlay options the most. So hopefully this video was helpful and it gave you some ideas to apply these overlay layer styles to your own work. I think these are really helpful and if you don't like to use a bunch of layers or you have too many layers you don't want to go through them all, this is a very nice way of applying these options without adding more layers and they're easy to turn on and off. You can just turn it on and off so you can see the difference and it's non-destructive so nothing is really going to be damaged by using this. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any comment or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them and I will see you in the next one.